Hey everyone, welcome back to our Wednesday Night Devotionals. Tonight we're going to be talking about community. What it is, how to find it, and how to build it. And we'll be talking about video games and how that contributes to community as well. But before I geek out on everyone tonight, go ahead, hit that like button, share this video, and make sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube to get updates about our new videos that we put up throughout the week. And if you miss one, you can check out our social media pages or go to our website at mhbclouisville.com to catch up with the videos that you might have missed. Alrighty, so let's talk about community. The Webster's Dictionary defines community like this, a unified body of individuals. It continues on by giving examples of what that means, and it could be the people that you live close to, the interests that you share with other people, or really anything dealing with having something in common with other people. The full definition of the community is very broad because the purpose of community is to bring people together. Now, believe it or not, the word community shows up in the Bible only 111 times. But it only shows up once in the New Testament. And it's actually brought up in Acts, and it wasn't even mentioned by any of our normal characters, nor did it really even involve the church itself. However, the idea of community exists all throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. The first thing that Jesus does is to gather a community of people around him that followed him and believed in him. He created that community and he helped it grow. Today, community has many different meanings, and there are some who are better at, than others at creating community. But some of the best community creators are actually found in the gaming industry. And they come in two different categories. They are the gamers themselves and streamers who stream the games that they play. Regarding the first, that's the category I fit into, it's become amazing how easy it is to connect with other gamers online. This one game in particular that I play on my cell phone uh, called Marvel Strike Force. It's a turn-based multiplayer game where you get to control superheroes and villains from the Marvel comic universe. And like most games of its type, it slowly releases new characters each month and provides an incentive to join alliances to work together with others to defeat special raids and to fight other alliances through a war mechanic. What this game, like others, does to create community, though, is that it utilizes an app called Discord. And if you are a mobile gamer of any type, this may be something that you know about. But Discord, unlike its name, is a chat app that allows you to communicate more effectively with your team. Think Facebook Messenger or group texting for gamers. Anyway, where gamers succeed in creating community is through this app called Discord. It allows us to talk to each other to plan out strategies and send notifications, but it also allows us to create a community that looks out for each other. The specific alliance that I am part of is especially good at this. A former leader of this alliance who just recently moved on from the game itself, still stays with us on that Discord channel that we've set up and is still talking to all of us and updating us on his life. And I do the same as well as others on the app too. I've gotten to know people from around the world throughout through this alliance and I get to share the love of this game, the characters in it and the geekiness of playing a Marvel game with them. But I also create friends with them through this app. For several of the members, we've actually gone further and become Facebook friends and have revealed true, our true names, not just a username that we game with. We learn about each other's lives, and we share both the good and the bad with each other. Many of our members have gotten COVID over the last almost two years, with one of them getting it at least twice because he was an EMT worker. But the point of all of this is that community is important to our survival in this world. You may have heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child, and that is because it really does. It takes a lot of people working together to make community happen. Without community, the church would have died off long before it was started. But how do we make community? I mean, we know it's important, and sometimes we can just enter into an established community, but how do we actively make and grow a community? Well, for starters, you have to take that word active and you actually have to do it. Paul uh, didn't just sit back on a couch in Jerusalem writing letters to different towns saying, hey, you should start a church that worships Christ. It wouldn't have worked. Paul instead 
becomes active. He travels from town to town to build communities to spread the gospel to as many as he could reach. And it never mattered who he started with. See, in Acts 6, chapter 16, we see the community being built right before our eyes. So let's read a little bit, starting in verse 11 there. Then setting sail from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a Roman colony, which is a leading city of that district of Macedonia. We stayed in that city for a number of days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the city gate by the river where uh, there was a place of prayer. We sat down and we spoke to the women gathered there. A woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God, was listening. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was spoken by Paul. After she and her household were baptized, she urged us, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Here we meet a woman named Lydia. Now, Paul had originally gone to Philippi to meet who he thought was a man uh, from the vision that God had given him. But instead, he meets Lydia. And that meeting shows Paul that Lydia is the start of that community. Lydia, who owned her own home and business, something that was rare for the time, but was able to bring her whole household uh, to be baptized. And Lydia became the house pastor at the church of Philippi for a time. She helped create the community that thrived there. And we can do the same if we are active in our pursuit of creating community. But it involves action. We have to be out in the world inviting people into our community and being okay as people come and go. Not everyone will mesh well with our community. On the game I mentioned earlier, people have come and gone repeatedly, and we've had to ask a few to leave because the idea, their ideas of the game went against ours. Now, for the first time in a while, we have a group of like-minded players that don't play to be the best, but play because of the people who are with them. And to be honest, if it wasn't for this community that I helped create in this game, I would have left that game long ago. And the church is the exact same way. Not everyone shows up for the preaching and the music every week. Some show up because of the community that we've created here at Melbourne Heights Baptist Church. And you can be a part of that community too. Oddly enough, our Sunday school material right now is the community Bible experience. And we'll actually be starting up our small groups again uh, to start on that final book of that series in the upcoming weeks. So you can be a part of that community if you want to. And if you're already part of our community, take action to invite others to come in too. Go ask your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers. Let them come see the community that we've created. And if they aren't comfortable with in-person services right now, invite them to interact with us online by going to watch one of our services on Sunday mornings and engage with people watching with them. Community is about working together for a common goal. And I think Jesus Christ certainly a worthy goal to aim towards. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this gift of community that you've given us, the ability to uh, just to come together with a like-minded sense of purpose and belonging. Father, we ask that you help us to uh, just continue to build this community, to continue to, to build this love that we've been growing throughout the years, and just to continue to work together to honor you and bring glory to your name. So thank you, Father, for all that you do. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming out tonight, and I really do hope that these devotionals do reach someone out there that needs to hear these words. But before we go, make sure to share this video or follow and subscribe to our social media pages to be notified when new videos go up. And with that, I hope you all have an awesome week, and I will see you next Wednesday.